how these branches reach. This video will share the story of ancestry of the Veal family tree. As you can see, 30 names make up the first branch in its reaching stems. Then we reach to the next branch higher up the trunk, which has 30 more for each of the lower trunks, 16, and so on. This edition, we're looking at the Veal branch as it reaches high up into the trunk through the generations, stretching back centuries. Gerard Veal, born 1913, Clarence Creek, Ontario. He was one of three siblings, born with his twin brother, Hercule. Two sisters would come along soon enough, Diane in 1914 and Rita in 1916. Gerard also had five half-siblings, born from 1924 and on. Gerard married Jeanette Vilmer, born 1921 in Bourgette, Ontario. She was eight years his junior. Together, they had seven children. Perrette, Richard, Donald, Jacqueline, Maurice, Vincent, and Richard. Gerard was a farmer who had innate carpentry abilities. Gerard was the first veal born in Ontario. Before we look back into his story, there will also be historical insights woven in with the important personal dates and events. For example, decades after Gerard was born in 1980, there was the Quebec referendum. This was an option for Quebec to separate and seek province sovereignty from Canada. The result, a 60% vote for no. As a first generation Canadian, Gerard may have been concerned for his ancestors' homeland and the increasing prejudices surrounding the conflict suffered by the French population in Ontario. Leading up to this event, the issue was long brewing, perhaps leading to his decision to have his children speak English and Anglicize themselves, perhaps based on how he was treated himself. Now let's look into his story. It's 1913, and Gerard is baptized at St. Pascal de Bayo in Russell, Ontario. In 1917, his mom passes away when he is four. In 1924, his first half-sibling is born. Gerard is 11. It's 1939, and Canada declares war on Germany. While Gerard may have wanted to fight in World War II, the military didn't deem him fit enough to fight. It's 1941. His dad dies, but Gerard is 28. 1944, his twin brother, Hercule, dies at 31. A year later, and he has a new brother-in-law, Alcide LeMay, who was a soldier in World War II and lost his leg. He marries Rita, and Gerard stands in for their father to walk her down the aisle. He is 32. Six months later, his half-sister, Rose Alice, dies at 24. It's 1946, and Viola Desmond is dragged out of a Nova Scotia movie theater and charged by police after she refuses to move from the main floor of the theater to the balcony where black patrons were segregated. Her decision to fight her charges raises awareness of the racism experienced by black Canadians. It's 1948, Gerard Berry's Jeanette Vilmer. He is 35. Eight months later, their first child, Perrette, is born. And the kids keep on coming through the 50s and into the 60s. Even though there are else struggles, the family perseveres. It's 1960. Liberals win the vote in Quebec for the first time, signaling change and reform known as the Quiet Revolution. 
Just over a month later, Canada's Bill of Rights introduced civil rights for all. The 1970s come about, and so do grandchildren. 1972, in international hockey, Canada scored a dramatic winning goal with 34 seconds left to defeat the Soviet Union 6-5 in the final game of the Summit Series. It's 1979. Gerard's wife dies when he is 66. The 80s come along and grandchildren totally keep popping out. They'd end up calling him Peppy. It's 1992. With his memories fading over time, Gerard passes away at 78. But his tale is not forgotten. His story continues through new branches, like the Hilliers, his sisters, his aunts and uncles, and the veritable army of Studleys, along with the twisting and turning of the many branches from his many ancestors. The larger story continues. I, at least branches reach.